Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Charles City County, Mr. Coda. Ms. Johnson. Present. Ms. Russell. Present. Thank you. Town of Ashland, Ms. Abbott. Mr. McGraw. Present. Goochland County, Ms. Lascolette. Chair Spoonhauer. Here. Chesterfield County, Mr. Carroll. I am here. Thank you. Mr. Davey. I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Ms. Fry. Here. Ms. Haley. Mr. Holland. Here. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Engel. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Vice Chair Winslow. Good morning. Good morning. City of Richmond, Mr. Addison. Here. Thank you. Mr. Blackwood. Here. Mr. Giovia. Here. Mr. Jones. Ms. Lambert. Ms. Lynch. Dr. Newbill. Here. Mr. Poole. Ms. Robertson. Hanover County, Mr. Davis. Ms. Lorenzon. Mr. Peterson. Here. Ms. Pritchard. Mr. Whitaker. Here. Henrico County, Mr. Baca. Mr. Brannon. Mr. Mackey. Reverend Nelson. Here. And Mr. Mackey's on the call, I see, but okay. muted. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bannon. Mr. Schmidt. Mr. Thornton. Here. Thank you. New Kent County, Mr. Lockwood. Mr. Moyer. Here. Ms. Page. Good morning. Here. Thank you. Powhatan County, Mr. Byerly. Good morning. Here. Good morning. Thank you. Mr. Hall. Here. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. That concludes the roll call. Thank you very much. On to public comments. Well, Ms. Heater, do we have any public comments that have been submitted or does anyone have their hand raised? We did not receive any public comments before the deadline now. Okay, great. Um, at this time, I'll re entertain any requests for additions or changes to the order of business. Hearing none, um, we will move on as publicized. Moving into item two, all business. Um, we have your, uh, the minutes of the last meeting have been in the packet. Hopefully everyone has had a chance to review them. Any um, questions or conversation? And I'm happy to entertain a, mo a motion to accept the February meeting minutes. So moved, Mr. Chair, Cynthia Newville. Thank you, Dr. Newville. Second. Andres Addison. Thank you, Mr. Addison. All right. All in favor, any discussion? All in favor of accepting the February meeting minutes, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Opposed? Abstentions? All right, the motion passes. Thank you. Moving right along to standing committee and other reports. I'll turn it over to our executive director, Ms. Heater. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll point your attention to the intergovernmental and environmental reviews that are in your packet. Uh, we provide these each month to summarize the reviews that have been completed. Uh, in addition to that, I think that Chairman Spoonhauer asked that I give an overview and update about how things are going with the Better Together webinar series. So just to give those of you that are not familiar, a little bit of background. 
Uh, we launched this new series in November of 2020. So it is a new initiative for us. We host a webinar, the Better Together webinar series, each Thursday of the month at two o'clock in the afternoon. Each of you should have an invitation in your calendar to attend. It is an opportunity for members of our commission and key stakeholders. So if you'd like to invite members of the staff at, at your localities, please let us know and we would be happy to add them to the invitation. It's an opportunity to hear firsthand about um, examples of collaboration and cooperation across the region to meet needs. The um, intention of the, of the webinar series is to fulfill one of the objectives in our strategic planning process that was to celebrate the good things that are happening in the region. And we like to try to connect that work and the highlights that we cover to things that Plan RVA staff members are involved with. So not everything that we focus on in the Better Together webinar series is something that's led by the, the Planning District Commission, but it is something that we have some kind of a connection to in, in either leading or somehow supporting that work. Um, so as I said, our primary audience is our commissioners. Each of you have that invitation to attend each month and have access to the webinar link. That allows you to ask um, during the Q&A session questions or give comments. And I want, just wanna say thank you to those of you that have been doing that. It's been really great to see the attendance uh, increase month over month from, from our commission members and, and local government representatives. Um, several of you have attended and the feedback that we've gotten thus far has been really strong. So thanks for that. Any suggestions you have about topics that you'd like us to schedule for future months would really appreciate. And I should mention that the webinars are also live streamed on YouTube. So they're accessible to the public. Um, during the session, folks can watch it you know, live streamed or they can um, view the, the archived webinar recordings later. So if you go to our YouTube channel, you can find uh, all of the webinars recorded in, in the playlist for the Better Together webinar series. Just to give you a little bit of a, a um, overview, if you haven't been able to tune in, in November, we featured the Emergency Management Alliance of Central Virginia. So they talked a lot about the structure that they have in place and the, the benefits of that, especially as, it, as they've been working together um, <laughs> in uh, kind of um, high functioning mode uh, during the COVID, COVID response effort. In December, we uh, facilitated a discussion among a number of the executives of the region's education foundations and talked a little bit about the work that they're doing to collaborate more together uh, in, in the wake of, of the pandemic and, and beyond. In January, we had a panel of speakers talking about housing planning activities in the Richmond region. So um, Javon Burton from the Partnership for Housing Affordability talked about the housing framework. Our own Mark Bittner facilitated that session and uh, led some conversation among David Sachs from Henrico County and Heidi Aguilar from Root Policy about the multi-jurisdictional analysis of impediments to fair housing. And Carol Dunlap represented Goochland Cares talking about the affordable housing study that is underway in, in the county. In February, we had our own um, facility, well, uh, panelist uh, from our board, Dan Schmidt, representing Richmond Region Tourism, along with Jack Berry and Neil Shaman and Catherine O'Donnell, talking about the Richmond Regional Tourism Master Plan. I think that one hit the all-time highest of, of attendees and viewers. So um, I now know that the recipe is to include a commissioner on the panel. <laughs> so watch out. I'll probably be reaching out to one or more of you to to talk about that, but I know several of you are involved in that initiative, Mrs. Page and Mr. Holland and probably others. So um, that one was an exciting one to be able to feature about how Richmond Region Tourism is leading, particularly as we think about economic recovery. Um, upcoming in March, next week on the 18th, we'll be having John Martin come to talk about the work that's happening with RVA 757 Connects. This is probably an effort that most of you are not as familiar with, um, but there is, uh, a pretty large effort that has been brewing for the last couple of years to connect business leaders across the two larger regions uh, to discuss the ways that we can leverage our uh, academic um, corridor that we have along I-64 um, to leverage um, transportation needs that, that uh, transcend both of our regions um, to leverage the, the um, opportunity to bring capital to the region for entrepreneurial investment and other things. So he'll be talking about some of those key initiatives and priorities. And we thought that you as elected officials uh, would be interested in what that largely private sector led initiative is, is thinking about and hoping to champion. And frankly, for Mr. Martin to get some feedback from you 
about what's most important here in the Richmond region. So um, thanks to everybody for tuning in. Um, I think it's been a neat way to keep folks connected, keep our board meetings relatively efficient and focus on the business, but um, you know, ideally also feed you in being able to have the opportunity to do a deep dive on some interesting things that are happening in the region and really to be able to raise the profile of um, how much cooperation and collaboration is happening in the Richmond region. I think sometimes we don't give enough credit to the amazing work that's happening out there that so many of you are a part of, but um, also that, you know, I think sometimes we, we let um, the narrative be that we don't collaborate and we don't work together. And, and in fact, there are lots of things that our jurisdictions and our partners in the jurisdictions are doing together. So happy to answer any questions if you have any. Um, but wanted to share that little bit of a spotlight on the webinar series. Thank you, Ms. Heater. Sure. Uh, if you'd like, I'll move on to the program dashboard. Sure. Just a little bit of a preview, a teaser, if you will. Um, Mr. Spoonhauer and I have been talking about, and I think we'll be chatting about the imperatives later in the agenda, but um, coming to an agenda soon, there will be a, a dashboard. Uh, as you know, I think that our staff reports have oftentimes been uh, very wordy and a, a bit intimidating or overwhelming to be able to get through. So we're working on a, a kind of a cleaner um, um, format. Those of you that serve on the TPO are familiar that we launched a new staff report from, um, format under Chet, Chet's um, efforts. Uh, last month or the month before. And so um, we'll be following suit to be able to bring kind of a cleaner format that is uh, ideally more visually pleasing to you that can summarize all of the work that our staff members are involved with and, and moving forward handle on a monthly basis about where we are on our various programs and projects. So uh, that'll be forthcoming in a, in a future meeting agenda. Very much looking forward to that, uh, Ms. Heater. Thank you so much. All right, moving right along to the executive committee and chairman reports. Just want to take a minute, and I'm sure you've heard or somewhere today on the radio or online that today is the dubious one year anniversary of the World Health Organization declaring uh, co the coronavirus a, a global pandemic. And I'm, I'm sure there are, I'm a, there are a few of you in the same boat as me. If this is our, my first term serving as an elected official, um, and even those that have served for decades, um, never have we served in times such as these. And I just want to thank everybody for their service and know that uh, you're here for a reason and you were chosen for a reason and continue to lead strong and lean on each other as we have been. I've uh, been getting daily updates from the Chickahominy Health District, which Goochland County is part of, and just the, the cooperation and the collaboration that is occurring to get shots in arms and do the things that have to get done. It's, it's, it's unfortunate that we have to be in these, this type of situation, but it is so encouraging to see how we can pull together and, and get great things done. So um, thank you all for that. And i uh, Stay encouraged. It's a beautiful day today. It's been a great week and uh, spring's coming and uh, looking for better things uh, coming forward. Mr. Chairman, if yes. I can, it's Pat O'Bannon. First, I want to apologize for coming in late. I came in just as the executive director was beginning a report. No problem. Uh, got some technical difficulties. Um, I, I do want to mention that um, there are some shots available this weekend, uh, Friday and Saturday at the race and um, if someone is interested for me to pass their name along, um, people who qualify, I can send them over to the, the county folks. Uh, I think they originally had about a thousand shots, so it's not unlimited. Uh, I have sent over some names, but if anyone here has a, a few people that they know missed the shots or particularly in the 75 and above or the 16 and above with pre-existing conditions, let me know, okay? <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Ms. O'Bannon. Okay, I um, want to talk, bring up the charter agreement revisions um, that and we spoke about this in the executive committee and uh, we had an update from Chesterfield County and uh, Mr. Winslow, I'm happy to kind of report out what the findings were unless you want to speak to it, it's up to your preference. 
Uh, I'm happy for you to summarize. That'd be fine. Sure. So um, as we were discussing the, the, the most recent version of the amendments, um, it has been brought to the attention that um, Chesterfield County's intention is to cap the amount of their contribution at the level of the, uh, the population upper limit, and which, would, which will uh, have impacts to our revenues, obviously. So we have recommended this move forward to the Finance Committee, uh, Ms. Heater and staff will be um, calculating the impacts of this and coming up with a recommendation uh, for moving forward. So most of the, I believe the consensus in the executive committee meeting was that I know myself, I'll be, I, I will not be recommending this come before our, our full board for a vote until the Finance Committee meeting, which I believe is the, is it the 23rd, Ms. Heater? Yes, she's shaking her yes. Um, so they'll they'll be meeting on the 23rd to discuss and we look forward to hearing um, what their recommendations for are from that. Uh, so we're sort of in a, a, a holding pattern for that. Any, um, so I'll just move on right from there. I wanted to also provide some information. As of February 8th, um, our finance director uh, has resigned her position and um, is, is currently on leave um, and will be uh, no longer with the organization as of the end of this month. Um, have been working with Ms. Heater and Mr. Holland very closely to come up with a interim plan and I'm, I'm super impressed uh, with how Ms. Heater has handled this um, rather than just posting a, a position and, and just moving forward status quo really took a lot of time and thought into what's the best way to, to handle this. And she's worked with a, a couple different organizations to come up with a, a really great um, interim strategy that uh, to, to ensure that nothing is missed and that we're, our finances are as solid um, as they can be. Um, we want to especially uh, rethink uh, Chesterfield County and Henrico counties. Uh, Chesterfield has lent some support to do some deep dives into some of our, uh, our books. And then uh, Henrico is, is providing ongoing support. Um, and that support coupled with uh, uh, what I would sort of call, and this here you can correct me, but sort of like a fractoral um, CFO uh, that we've uh, been able to utilize from VACO has, um, has us moving right along. So just wanted to provide that update to everyone. And the last thing for my report is uh, the 2021 key imperatives. One of the things that in one of the things that has been interesting to me as I've been in this position is, is almost on a weekly basis, um, I learn more about what our organization does. And I and I know one of uh, Ms. Heater and I have, have spoke about how, how do we get that out there more? And so last month, uh, Martha introduced the 2021 key imperatives, which is a guideline of a way to communicate to us and for us to, to understand what direction are we going on? What, what are the things that, that Martha and her team are working on and where we're taking things in 2021 uh, for us to really uh, uh, combine and support uh, her efforts with her her team. So I hope, and we did get some feedback um, regarding them and had some conversations, but I hope everybody had a chance to review them. These are by no means a, a, a project list of that, you know, it, it's an ironclad document. It, again, they're, they're guidelines and um, it just kind of helps us understand where the organization is heading and what are the important things that we are trying to accomplish this year. Um, if, does anyone have any um, comments or questions, or kudos, attaboys, concerns? Okay. Um, we would like to take uh, this mostly symbolic, but we, I think, it, I think it's important for um, us to be aware and understand and be uh, supportive. So I would love to. I would love to entertain a motion to approve the 2021 key imperatives that uh, uh, that they're coming up on your screen now um, that uh, Ms. Heater has put together. So 
So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Canova Peterson. This is Jim Holland. Second, second Mr. Dad. Chair. Uh, thank First. you, Mr. Holland. Hearing um, a, and these have no financial indications, so I don't think we'll get scolded for doing an acclamation vote. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor of approving uh, the uh, fiscal year 2021 key imperatives, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? All right, the motion carries. Ms. Heater, thank you so much for putting this together. Again, I hope this drives enhanced transparency into all the hard work you and your team are doing, and we can agree on the direction that we're, we're moving. And I look forward to hearing quarterly updates on how we are progressing to the timelines that you've communicated to us. And at that, I will turn it over to Mr. Holland for our audit facilities and finance committee report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate your comments earlier about what has transpired recently regarding our executive di finance director, rather, and regarding the actions that the that our executive director has taken uh, in concert with the finance committee. Uh, we're working very closely, and as just approved, and I think that's so appropriate, the number one in, in objective or priority is our financial stability and us and that's why the essence of what we're doing is very timely. Uh, with finances, as you well know, you have to move. You can't wait. You have to move expeditiously, and you have to be on top of it so that uh, everyone is comfortable and that transparency occurs. But with that being said, I, I want the uh, executive director to give us an overview of the financial conditions as it stands now. Ms. Heater, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, we have provided a narrative summary document as well as the balance sheet and uh, profit and loss statement in the packet. Before I dive into that, I'll just uh, share with you that uh, over the last um, month or so since your last board meeting, um, as both Chairman Spoonhauer and um, Committee Chairman Mr. Holland have, have indicated, we've been working closely with members of the board, as well as Chesterfield County and Henrico staff and our other resources to be able to uh, do analysis of our performance year to date through December and um, set a, a course for financial improvement. So you will have seen in the January financial statements that there is a modest net income for the month of January. Um, so we are encouraged and pleased with those results. And uh, I will share that uh, we will continue to see more positive results when the February statements are presented to the Finance Committee um, in two weeks at their meeting. Uh, a couple of things are going on right now that I think you'll continue to see the results of the efforts in the last month um, to, to be able to improve our financial position. Um, we have undertaken an effort to go back and review our quarter one and quarter two reimbursement billings and make sure that those are indeed accurate. And so um, we're, we're working to reconcile those and are seeing some modest improvement to financial position as a result of um, some, some updates to those billings. Um, we also have been working to make sure that our systems are appropriately in place to be able to assure that um, we're, we're maximizing the revenue that's available to us. So again, uh, in the statements, as far as the period through January, uh, you do see an adjustment to December's financial statements. Those are outlined. Sid, if you could scroll down to the profit and loss statement. Uh, we've worked closely with the Henrico team and, and our internal team to make adjustments to December statements. Just keep scrolling, Sid. I'll tell you when to stop. There, that's great. Thank you. So you'll see that there's a column um, just to the right of the January column. There, there are two columns that show the original December um, statements that were presented to you last month and then an adjustment and then the adjusted as adjusted December 31. So a little bit of, of um, change there, a modest um, you know, kind of pickup to be able to address some of the, some of the issues that we've identified, but um, we are working through all of those. And I expect that the February and March financial statements will be sort of back to normal and what we would expect. And we won't continue to see these adjustments happening for prior periods. 
Um, I just wanted to say thanks to Mr. Holland and um, Mr. Spoonhauer and other members of the Finance Committee for your attentiveness during this time. And again, I wanted to echo the thanks that um, the folks from the Chesterfield Finance Department and, and helping us do this analysis early on of the first quarter of grant billing and then also the ongoing support from Henrico has been really helpful as, as we've moved through and, and are undertaking this transition. So I'm happy to answer questions about kind of the broader picture or the specifics of the financial statements. And I know Mr. Holland is here too, since he's been <laughs> helping us think through some of these adjustments. Uh, if there are no questions, I think the committee would be recommending a motion to accept the financial statements for January and the adjusted financial statements for December. Yes, first of all, let me say I greatly appreciate Ms. Heater's hard work on this. It's really taken uh, a lot of effort and time and I applaud her as the chairman noted and thank her for her efforts to uh, assist in this regard. And with that thought in mind, I'll move that we approve the uh, adjusted financial statements as presented uh, through December 31st, 2020. Thank you, Mr. Holland. Do I have a second? I'll second it, Pat O'Bannon. Thank you, Ms. O'Bannon. Uh, I believe this one needs to be a roll call vote. Ms. Gregory, is that correct? We haven't been doing a roll call previously, but I'll defer to Mr. Gregory's recommendation. These are just, this is just an acceptance of the financial statements, not necessarily an approval that, that disperses or approves disbursements of funds, so. Okay. All right, well, that being said, any further discussion? All in favor of accepting the December and January financial statements as amended, please aye. leave the vote saying aye. Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, thank you very much. Moving right along, uh, public outreach and engagement. Mr. Davey. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me okay? I hear you perfectly, sir. Great. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to echo the theme of the morning and, and remind everybody how hard Peter uh, and her staff have been working. Um, as many of you remember, uh, they went out and got a grant um, from the Community Foundation, which sort of kicked off a conversation about improving you know, our outreach. Uh, community and stakeholder engagement process. Um, staff has led a very um, robust and comprehensive RFP process. Um, they vetted 15 different submittals and down selected down to six. Um, Mr. Thornton and I were um, part of an interview panel uh, that was able to participate in virtual interviews for at least five of these six firms. Uh, and it was very, very well run. Uh, it was done on a great agenda. Each of the teams were very impressive in how they um, fit their value proposition into a 10 minute window. And then Mr. Thornton and I had an opportunity to ask questions. Um, and the strategy is to go ahead and extend what are called term contracts or on-call contracts to each of the six down selected firms, which each provide a unique skill set or talent or, um, you know, um, expertise that we may be able to deploy over the course of the next couple of years. It's very common in my business and, and other municipal practices to have a multiple team bench. Um, and so um, that is really the direction that um, Martha's staff has recommended that we go. And, and I think I can speak for Mr. Thornton that we're thrilled uh, with the, me, having met all of those teams. Uh, and we feel like it's a, a wonderful bench uh, that we can actually deploy over the next couple of years. Uh, I'll also provide a little bit of personal commentary um, to remind everybody on this call, um, something you probably already know, we have a ton of talent in this region. Um, and I personally believe the firms that um, many of you know, like, and trust in this region um, did a very great, they did a great job um, in their interviews and they're, they're very, very talented. So not only do we have a great local bench, uh, we've got some national reach if we need that as well. So Peter, anything else that you want to add to that? And of course, Martha will be here to answer any more specific questions that maybe Frank and I can't, but I think it was a fantastic process and I'm excited uh, to work with each and every one of those teams. Nothing to add, thank you. Great, any comments for uh, Mr. Davey? 
All right, Mr. David, th thank you for that. <laughs> Having been through many RFP processes myself, I know on the other side of it, I, I know how uh, how that goes. So thank you for for, uh, for heading this up, Martha. And th again, thank you and your team. Um, at this time, um, we will move on to any new business that anyone from the committee would have. All right. Hearing none, um, commissioner comments, local updates and discussion. This is the time for you guys to be able to brag on what, what's going well and or, you know, throw out some ideas of where, you know, uh, what you might want some help with and I'm excited to hear some new things. Mr. Chairman, this is Patricia Page for New Kent. Yes, Ms. Page, thank you for kicking us off. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I would like to um, take the opportunity to um, to talk about our New Kent COVID-19 vaccine call center. Um, early on, um, through the efforts of our Kent administrator and our fire chief, um, we established a call center, um, realizing that in rural New Kent, we have a lot of residents that don't have accessibility to broadband, I mean, to internet broadband, or um, our, especially our older adults, um, without computers. So we set up a call center where our uh, residents could call and we would absolutely take all of their information from um, over the phone and enter them into a call center. And so um, we have over 4,000 uh, residents that um, five of us have talked to one way or another. Wow. And um, so when they release vaccine to New Kent, um, through um, the efforts of our, some of our firefighters, um, we set up a program and where we could notify and um, those that have registered. And so to date, um, we have had three vaccine clinics. Um, everyone is excited to get vaccinated. Our last clinic we had was on um, last Saturday where we we're able to get um, Johnson & Johnson as well as the Moderma. And we set that up. We're doing Johnson & Johnson in the morning hours, uh, giving uh, Chickahama Health District the opportunity to switch over. And then in the afternoon, we did first and second uh, Moderna shots. And so very successful. Uh, nobody got placebos. Everybody got vaccinated. Um, of course, I will tell anybody thinking about uh, doing this task, we had people that their friends told them. So as far as Virginia Beach, that came up uh, to get vaccinated. Um, and because we, we didn't, we were, our commitment was not to waste any vaccine. So after our, our residents were vaccinated and all of A1 was vaccinated, then we um, took in others that came and registered on site and vaccinated them. So um, with us, that is one of our uh, latest success um, successes in New Kent. And um, now we're just lo looking forward and moving safely um, until we can open up this great Commonwealth again. So thank you, sir, for that. Thank you, Ms. Page, that's excellent work. All right, who else? I know there's a lot of good stuff going on out there. All right. Okay. Well, I thank everybody for for their time this morning. Looks like we're we get a little bit of time back, and I know we can all use it. We've got a lot going on. So just want to thank everyone again for attending and for their participation. And um, at this time, I will adjourn our meeting. Thank you so much.